One day while on a day trip, Sandra and I was visiting the Bunker Hill Covered Bridge in Catawba County. We noticed a peculiar looking symbol with a sign that read Carolina Thread Trail just underneath it. Now being an avid hiker, I looked into it and learned that it was a regional network of connected greenways, trailways, and blueways that reaches 15 counties in two states and that it was still growing with new trails being added. I had always wanted Sandra to hike with me and thought that this may be just the thing. So after looking at the website, we both set out to complete every single thread trail. So grab your gear and come along with us as we set out to hike or paddle every thread trail and learn with us about the history, the geology, and people of these areas. I'm sure there will never be a dull moment. God, look at this. I thought there was a rock behind me. Looks like this might be bear tracks. Dan Nicholas Park was created originally with a gift in 1968 of 330 acres of land from Mr. Dan Nicholas, a local entrepreneur and philanthropist. The park is now a 450-acre park that is home to the Hayden's Carousel and Minor Moose Gym Mine. There are cabins to rent to ensure all that the entire park can be enjoyed. The Carolina Thread Trail winds around Lake Murtis where the paddle boats are rented during the park season. It connects to the Persimmons Branch Trail, which is written up for its bird watching opportunities. The wildlife adventure area for which there is a fee is home to black bear, bald eagle, and various foxes. The length of the trail is two miles long and it's a, considered a loop. The hours of operation are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. except for during special events. Um, what I would do also is check the website just to make sure um, because depending on the time of year sometimes this can um, these times may change as far as the closing. Um, you'll want to see the Dan Nicholas Park map also for all the attractions available at the park. Um, the train, the carousel, golf, gym mine, and paddle boats are closed during the off season. Okay, it's time to give you an overview of the map that you see before you. Um, this park, Dan Nicholas Park, is really something to come to. Um, they got it going on. Um, it has came a long way from the 80s and the, even the early 90s. Um, they've added so much to this. Um, it's if you have a family of four, if you bring your thirty dollars out, you could easily come back home with some money. I mean, the attractions here really doesn't cost a whole lot, um, and with the trail and the the museum that they have here, it's free. It don't cost anything to go into it, um, and so the nature museum and uh, the wildlife adventure area i think it's like a dollar a person i mean in 50 cents for small children maybe um it's really it's literally just changed to get in um and then you got the campground now the campground is about 30 dollars uh, a night and this is for your like your your class c's class a your motor homes your travel trailers i'm not sure about the tent sites they do have some tent sites but the water hookup and the electric hookup is about $30 a night from the time of this recording. And um, they, um, they do have a dump station. It's not what you call full hookup on the campgrounds. The full hookup would be water, electric, and then they have a sewer hookup at each site. And so they do not have that. Um, but they do have a dump station. And so I've been camping here for years. And so, um, but you definitely want to check out um the park itself especially during the fall festival the fall festival they have all types of vendors music games things for the kids i mean it really is something um that these folks host and um they're always got something going on educational for you you know if you want to bring your kids to and um uh, my daughter um she volunteered in the nature museum um, they're always looking for volunteers if you want to volunteer your time. And um, it really is something that you can get involved with. 
and it's just you know this has got to be one of the best places around and uh, just top-notch park I will say that and so but if you look at the highlighted green area it right where it says start and finish um, now that's where we started our hike if you look a little bit further down you'll see the th and uh, i'm just going to take my mouse if you'll see that th right here that's where the trailhead actually starts um and you'll see me standing next to the post that you'll usually will see you'll see that or more of a fanciful style um trailhead post but this is right here before you get that to that bridge but it's right here by the lake but we started down here we parked the car down here there's a huge parking area down here and um, we parked here and we started the, the the hike and we walked all the way to the lake we walked around the lake you'll see the campground um, and all the campers and stuff like that and if you want to just jet off and just walk the campground you can do that for you for those of you that do have motorhomes and um, and then once you pass the campground over to the left hand side you will see um, the entrance for the the actual trail that goes into the woods and so but you'll go into the woods now this highlighted area here has to be the shorter loop now because the one that we did um it goes all the way to where bringle Ferry road is and then it comes back and so they do have certain shortcuts um, we saw at least two shortcuts that if you want to just take a, a shorter hike and go in um, I mean, and, and go back around to where it entered at. You can do that. But we saw cars, so we were probably around this area here. And then it comes back down just like that. And then what we did is when we came back out to the lake, Sandra went over to the concession stand, and I just backtracked the trail again. Oh, and, and then she met me um, right around um, here, and we walked all the way back out. And so um, I'm going to tell you, it's definitely worth coming to. Um, now, she swears that we did more than two miles, and I, I do agree with that. Um, we probably did more like three miles. Um, at minimum, we did at least three miles. And so, um, but like I said, definitely worth the hike. Um, you need to check this out. Um, it's a... Um, They've since the 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 eighties and the nineties, this place is is um, has grown by leaps and and bounds, and um, and it's such a, fr a family friendly thing. And during the weekends, um, I do know that the Rowan County Sheriff's Office has part timers that will go out there, and you'll see them on golf courts. So you do have the security there, and the certain events they'll also have them out there also, and uh, but. Guys, this is a really great place to go. I, they do allow you to fish. I think it's just catch and release only. And um, um, I actually, at one point in time, got a, a bass, a huge bass. I had to wait for it to die. It was dying, and it was floating in the pond. That thing was, it was huge. It was a gigantic thing, but they wouldn't let me take it out until it had died. But they did string it up and just kind of hang it on the, uh, the post. And so there's a huge find. Um, for taking fish out of the pond and so or out of the lake but um, they got paddle boats out there and it's just just a place to have a good time you definitely want to come here and check this out okay okay here I'm right here at Bringle Ferry Road and the entrance of Dan Nicholas Park now since the map showed it as being highlighted I went ahead and did it anyway um, and so don't know if it's actually part of the Carolina Thread Trail, but they had it highlighted, so I walked it. Now right here, if you keep going straight to the left, that takes you to the campground. Now we're going to be going to the right.
and those are uh, picnic shelters out there that you can um, use. You just got to reserve them. And this right here is the Granite Quarry Depot. It was moved from Granite Quarry um, some number of years back. Um, quite an undertaking from what I understand. It looks like um, the one I've been able to see that they pretty much just use it for storage. But it's a nice addition to Dan Nicholas Park. Definitely has some history to it. They've renovated it and gave it a good paint. Now what I'm about to do here is um, I'm going to walk to the end here and I'll be pointing the camera towards the woods. And um, they have a train, a little small train that you can ride on. And you'll see it coming through the woods here about the middle of the screen. It's a little tiny train. And I think it's just maybe one or two dollars a person to get on. Here it comes. And during Halloween, I know that they used to have what's called the Spooky Wookie Train. And so we used to take our kids to that. Not sure if they still do that or not. Um, you can check the website. Um, but during the October, you know, check it out. Um, and they used to do it at nighttime. And so it's something the kids got a kick out of. Now here, what we're doing is we're making our way towards the concession stand. Um, we're actually looking for the trailhead, that little marker um, that I will show in my videos on the Carolina Thread Trail. Uh, you got several different types that you'll see, like a 4x4. Four four. Sometimes we'll have the emblem, um, that little star-looking emblem, or uh, with the Carolina Thread Trail sign going down the side of it. And then they have some that's more um, extravagant with the pole with the great big... that emblem on this on the top of it and uh, but we're looking for that on the map it showed it around this area and so we went hunting it and at one point in time Sandra and I split up uh, trying to find it and so somewhere around here we thought that that's where it was at if you go to the left there That'll take you right there to the concession stand. And I'm going to the right, and she just went to the left. And what I'm headed to right now is um, the Animal Adventures. And um, as you can see, it's very nice. Now that big cage right there in front of me is where the bald eagles are at. And I was trying to get them on the camera in here, and I don't believe you can see them. But they're in there. I could see them. And I was trying to get them on the camera, so I'm not sure. About the middle of the screen is where they're at. Yeah, I can see them right now. That right in the middle there, you can see one. Now, this, I thought, was the um, trailhead marker from a distance. And when I walked up on it, I'm like, no, this ain't it. But it says, may peace prevail on earth. And um, it was the Covenant Community Convention um, or Connection, uh, May 16th, 2009. And what it is, is it's in that little saying that I just read is in different languages. And they have it on this post here. And so um, actually, this is the first time I ever recall seeing this thing. So I don't know if it's something within the last year that they had put up year or two of the time of this recording 
And so, but I never really paid much attention to it. But you see there, there's the the splash pad, and then you got the carousel, and um, and then there's some more. That right area right there takes you to the playground, and then you got the pet and zoo over there and the nature center. And so, but this is uh, part of that lake. Um, you can paddle boat, and we're going across a. Um, a bridge here to another bridge and that is where we believed that the trailhead marker was at that parking lot over to the left we're actually coming across that parking lot that we entered in at um, when we saw the uh, granite quarry depot we kind of just circled around and came back out this way. And as you can see, this place is very well taken care of. And right there on the right-hand side, whoop, I just panned away from it. That's the parking lot right there that we came in at, walking. Um, right there in front of you is that marker. Now we're going across the bridge and we're actually going to start going around this lake here on the path. And coming around to the end of it, um, not the end of the, the path on the lake, but um, going down the length of the lake, um, they got this bridge here which connects you over to the other side where the campground is. And, you know, the, feel free whenever you're walking this, you, you are free to walk onto the, the campground there. They have little paths, footpaths that you can uh, walk the walk to the um, campground here I'm pointing some stuff out to Sandra not really sure what I was looking at it may have been the height of the water I remember the water being pretty high this day you can see in the distance there the ducks are coming up to us <laughs> The ducks, every time they see people at the edge of the water, they think of food, because that's usually what people are doing, tossing in food. And they'll come right up to you. The ducks will take the food right out of your hand. They're so used to seeing people. And here I'm walking. You can see the, some of the campground there. We've actually camped in some of those places right at, next to the, the lake. As you can see here, that water's moving pretty good. It was pretty windy. But it was pretty. Beautiful. And that duck there. See that duck right there? My kids used to call them the George Washington duck. I guess because that little tuft of feathers on the back of its head. I don't know. It was funny. Every time I see it, I always think of what my kids call it, the duck, George Washington duck. <laughs> okay, here we're fixing to enter in the, to the trail in the woods that makes that great big loop. And this is as soon as you pass the campground coming out, um, you'll see it on the left-hand side. You'll look for these signs here. It says allow two hours to hike. Um, and that's really given a lot. It, I don't see it taking near that long to do this one loop, but I guess they want you to have a little buffer uh, for time. And that big field, you see that big field going over to the left-hand side, that's where I'm going to be going at. And that is a gigantic field. I mean, they could have a great big old camp out 
out in this area. It's really nice. Right in that direction there where I'm pointing is where I'm headed. You just go straight across. We used to take our kids out here um, leaf collecting back when we were homeschooling them. look right about in the middle of the screen you'll see a sign that's where I'm headed that'll give you a little scale of what that big fields like really nice and you'll see on those legs on the trail where it says trail at yeah, it should be familiar. The Carolina Thread Trail. And this is a real easy hike. It's not strenuous at all. Um, you will do some... Um, there are some steps, which you'll see. And there is a creek, which you'll see in a little bit. Which Sandra was real nervous crossing. <laughs> There are a few bridges out here you'll see. I can only imagine what this place would look like in the fall with all the leaves turning. And right here we're coming to a T intersection. Now what you'll want to do is you'll want to go left. Don't go right, you'll go left. There's a sign there that says in trail or in loop trail. And so it was a little bit confusing to us, but we're, we were just, uh, you know, looking at the map. I had it downloaded on my phone. It just seemed, you know, really it doesn't matter which way you go. I, you're still going to end up at the same spot, um, but you do go left. Here's a tree, it looks like everybody's had a turn carving on it. And uh, some of these carvings, where people have carved their name on it, it looks like it's been here a long time, some of these carvings. You can see where the name has, like this one up here, where the name has kind of just grew with the tree. Um, some of them you can't even distinguish anymore. And I was trying to find the oldest one I could find with the date on it. And right here, right here it says, looks like Carl and Jan, maybe? No, Carl and, Carl and Mary? It looks like eight. 83, 883, some of these other dates I can't even make out, but you can tell because the letters, this letter here is about as wide as my finger. Been here a long time.
No, this is it. There's an arrow. I'm gonna need some help. Yeah, you will need some help. This is where you need your trekking poles. Hold on a minute. Well, you can do this. You can step on the rocks. I'm scared. Right here. God, look at this. I thought there was a rock behind me. Uh -uh. Here, watch out. Look at those lines. Uh -huh. Look at that. What is that? I don't know, but I'm scared. But look at that. I don't like it. Boy, I almost had a... Hey, hold on. I'm going to show you. I don't like All right. This. Step right here on that and give me your hand. I'm scared. Come on. Give me your hand. This hand. Okay. Step on that. Step right there. Okay, give me your hand. I got you. You're not gonna fall. Okay, keep going. Keep going. Okay, keep going. You're not gonna fall. Come on. What am I supposed to do? Keep, go keep going. Ste step right here. Actually, if you step right here, you'll be good. You think I can get it? No, huh? I mean, you could. I wonder what that is on that. Okay, step down on it. I'm scared. Step down on it. Don't okay now step on the ground. Go step on the ground. All the way to the ground. Don't do don't don't do that. Yeah. Step on the ground. You'll slide. Step on the ground. Just go right to the ground. To the ground right there. Right here? <sighs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Right there. Do it to the ground. Oh, Lord have mercy. I wonder what this is here. That's freaky. Oh, you ain't see nothing. If you was to see some of the stuff saying that I went around and had to go through, you'd say, Donnie, you're out of your freaking mind. Here's some steps. That's cool. Check it out. Now, later on, um, you, you'll you see this, um, and this is probably what makes it a shorter one. We took the, um, it has to be the Pine Forest um, hike, which is longer. It goes around, and you will actually see the cars at Bringle Ferry Road. So this is must be, evidently must be what we've done, um, and that shortcut was what they're showing actually on um, the map there. And there's that little emblem there for the Carolina Thread Trail. And we made it all the way back. And for the most part, you just go right back out the way you came in. And Sandra made it out. Alive in one piece and not wet. And I couldn't help it. This was just a pretty sight. The sun was just starting to make its way down. Now, Sandra went around the other side where the concession stand is. You know, if you was just to keep going straight on the other side where we went in on that trail. And she met me um, at that parking lot. I just went back the way I came. making it more like a four mile hike for me and um, hers was at least three maybe a little over three but guys I hope you've enjoyed it um, this is a great hike a great place to come for your family there's so much to do so much to see you could spend a good day out there um, but please look at uh, the rest of my videos in the playlist I've got a lot more exciting um, uh, trails that I've done even as I speak I try to do them at least once a week or once every other week but you guys take care and I hope you've enjoyed them